Let's take a look at my five favorite mobile apps for ham radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Some of the apps I'm going to tell you about today will be cross-platform, meaning you can get them on iPhone or Android. But there are a couple that are specific to the platform, and we'll get to that as we go through the list. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first application, and that is Repeater Book. This is an app that has been on my phone for several years now, and an absolute must, especially if you're traveling. Uh, when you set this thing up, as long as you give it permission to access the GPS on your phone, it will sort the repeaters in your area by distance from you. Also, it gives you more information than just the basics sometimes. Let's take a look at this KU4B here in Murfreesboro, and you'll see that it gives me both the input and the offset uh, frequencies. It gives me the tone that I need, and then it also tells me that this is a Yezu System Fusion repeater. So, good information to know if you're a Yezu System Fusion user. Now, let's click back, and we want to take a look at one more. And that's the WB4LHO repeater. And I want to look at this one specifically because often you will see notes in here that can be helpful. You'll notice here that this one says analog only users are encouraged to use TSQ of 100 to cut down or eliminate digital noise. Now, this happens to be a pretty popular repeater in my area. And if you're running an analog-only radio and you plug in that TSQ of 100, then when digital users get on the system, it will actually blink out that noise. You don't have to sit there and listen to that digital traffic when you're running an analog-only radio. Next up on the list is HamAlert. And this is a really cool application. Again, one that I've been running for several years now. If you are listening for a specific call sign, and there's a lot of other criteria that you can use, uh, but I mainly monitor uh, two or three different call signs. But if that particular operator is spotted on the air, then you will get an alert on your phone letting you know that they've been on the air or that they are on the air currently. So let's take a look at this one, K8MRD. And it looks like Mike was working some FT8 on the 10 meter band. So it'll give you the exact frequency that he was heard on. It'll tell you who spotted him. And it will also give you the date and time that the alert was sent. Now this works off of triggers. So I plugged in, it looks like five different call signs. Well, one of them is mine. And that's sometimes helpful if you're out maybe doing a parks on the air activation and you're using FT8 it will let you know that your signal is being heard when you see the alert. But these are just various people that I like to know. Uh, Mike and Michael are both very active on Parks on the Air, so I like to know if uh, they're activating a park, so maybe I can jump on the radio and make a contact with them. Another great application to have on your phone is the QRZ.com app. And this one, in fact, the first two and this one are both available on Android and iPhone. But this just gives you a quick way to look up a call sign. So if we go up to the search box, I'm going to just plug in my call for this one. And we hit the search button and it will give you all of the details for that specific call sign. You also have the buttons across the bottom of the app, which can give you more information. So if I click on this one, you'll see that it takes me right to my QRZ page where you can scroll through and read more about that particular operator. So I just find this one handy to have when I'm out and about. Maybe I'm listening to a local repeater and I don't recognize someone's call sign, or maybe I'm working HF and want to know more information about that particular operator. Opening up QRZ and punching in a call sign makes it super simple to get that data. Now, another application that I love to have on my phone is Radio Mail, and that's for doing WinLink connections. You can run that through Telnet, which uses the internet, or you can connect this up to a sound card and a radio and be able to actually do WinLink connections just using your phone over RF. Now, Radio Mail is specific to the iPhone platform, and I just did a video not long ago on this application if you want to know more about it. Currently, it's in beta testing, but should be hitting the App Store soon. 
If you're an Android user, then you want to check out Woad or Winlink on Android. I have used Woad in the past on various Android phones and it works brilliantly as well. Both the Woad app and Radio Mail can utilize a MobiLink TNC if you happen to have one of those on hand. Now, if you haven't already heard about Hammers, you got to come out from underneath the rock and check out this application. This is a fabulous app if you want to log contacts while in the field and use your phone to do so. When you first open up the application, you'll see a screen that looks like this. I'm just going to click New Logbook. We can give it a title, any title you want to name this particular logbook. And then we've got several templates that we can choose from. So we can just do a generic. We can do Parks on the Air, Summits on the Air, Field Day, and Winter Field Day. For this example, I'll go ahead and select Parks on the Air and click Save. Once we do that, you're going to be brought into the logging screen. Now, you do need to set up all of your current information right here in this center section. And then, as you log your contacts, you simply plug in the call at the top and click the Save button. As you go through the day or maybe at the end of the day, you can also scroll down to the very bottom and you can click on the QSO map and this would show you all of the QSOs that you've logged during that activation. Another cool feature of it is you've got the POTA Spots tab. If we click over there, we can sort through all of the modes and the bands uh, and the different things that they have filters for and then we can scroll through and see who is actually activating a park at any given time and what uh, frequency they're using and what mode they're using. So this is probably the most frequently used app on my phone. Now don't click off the video just yet. Those are my top five, but I wanna show you guys one more application before we get out of here today. And that's a couple of different APRS applications. For Android users, you want to look up APRS Droid, and for iPhone users, APRS.fi. Both applications will give you the ability to just run APRS on your phone itself, utilizing the internet connection to send messages and track your location. But the way I prefer to use it is to connect this up to an HT that doesn't already have APRS, and then let the phone do the work for me. And this allows you to use any inexpensive HT to utilize the APRS system. Did your favorite application not make the list? Put it down in the description below. I'm always looking to learn about new applications that I might not be aware of. Thanks for tuning in today. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.